Okay, everybody, here we are for part two of Easter crafts for this year. If you missed the part one video, I will place a link to it down below. That way you can catch up. That was a fun video. And so many of you were written, really inspired by those little crafts. So let's go ahead and get started with week two or part two. So this is a really, really cute little jar that I found at the Target dollar spot. It was $5. I love that the lid has little bunny ears on it. So of course we are going to get this all cutesy cutesy. First, let's go ahead and just remove this little plastic that is holding the top and bottom. And what I'll do is, let's see, I wanna decide where the front is. I see like a little line in the glass there, so I don't want that to be my front. So I'm just pitch picking just another spot. And the first thing to do is grab rubbing alcohol and just clean off the surface where I want to put my vinyl. I'll just wipe that down with a paper towel and everything that I use to create today I will place down in the description box below I do a nice little source list of links so that you can easily recreate any of these crafts and I have a really fun font that I used this time as well so I'll be sure to link that down below okay so let me grab my little weeding tool and I kept it simple we are keeping it really clean and simple on this little jar because I like that the ears are kind of the fun part of this, right? I think the ear lid is just super cute. So I want to just have a really clean and simple sentiment. So I just spelled out sweet treats with this cute font. Okay, I'll go back through and just grab the little middles and we're all set. I have a piece of transfer tape that I think is going to be just perfect. Let me also trim this down a little bit. Okay, so there we yeah. are. I absolutely love this time of year because the pastel M&Ms come out and I am a pastel lover. So I am going to grab a huge bag of pastel M&Ms to put in this beautiful little jar. And I think that in and of itself is a really cute little piece of decor for Easter for your kitchen. All right, I'll burnish the front of this. That way I can release the vinyl from the cutting sheet and transfer it over to the transfer tape. And I'll go ahead and flip that over and burnish the back. And when you do that, it comes off just flawlessly. Okay, let's bring this right back in and place this down. Now, I might have to resituate my little bunny ears. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. But I think that looks great. Okay, so go ahead and just lay that down. I'm gonna go ahead and just lay that down with my fingers first and foremost, and then I can go and reinforce that with my scraper tool. And it really doesn't have much of a curve, so that laid down really effortlessly, but let's make sure there's no bubbles. All right, grab a little corner of this transfer tape and we have a really quick and simple, sometimes that's a little bit hard to get up though, but sometimes that can be a little tricky to start. Okay, but we have a really quick and simple piece of Easter decor, but also more importantly, I think this would make for a very cute gift. So if you filled this with some really fun sweet treats, handed this off as a gift, you're definitely going to be loved because that's just way too cute. All right, let's move on to our next craft. The next little craft that we're going to do is inspired by a couple pieces. This is from Hobby Lobby from this year and it came in a bare wood, but I applied a single layer of chalk paint to it. I also have a scrap piece of vinyl here. And then I believe this, yes, Crafter Square means this is from the Dollar Tree. And I love pieces like this that have that little slatted shiplap look because I think it just adds a lot of visual interest. So what we're going to do is we're gonna do a little layering piece on this little sign and it's gonna turn out so cute. So for my vinyl, all I did was I took some little circles in Cricut Design Space and I simply just duplicated them over and over again and we're gonna create some little polka dots on this bunny. So grab your scraps. If you wanted to do a variety of colors, you could. I'm just gonna keep this simple and do one color. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to, if I haven't said it before, I am in love with my new heat tool. 
This is amazing. This is a hot glue gun and I just purchased this about a month ago. I am obsessed with it. It is one of my best purchases. Okay, you can use transfer tape. I'm simply going to apply these like a sticker and some of them are going to run off the edge. That is just fine. But what I'm going to do is do my best to kind of, I say that I'll randomly place them, but I'm more than likely going to have a little bit of structure to it. And we'll just place these all around and create a fun little look. And having them interact with the sides, kind of running off the edge makes it look really, really neat in the end. So don't be confined to just the area, but be sure you play with the edges as well. Okay, so let's do, oh, I did just enough. Do something like this, and then maybe we'll add one. Actually, that might be good. I don't wanna use one just for the sake of using it. However, maybe something like that would look, well, kind of neat. Okay, so now I'm going to just turn this over and trim off the back with my cutting knife. I'll turn this over. I have a rotating cutting mat, which I just absolutely adore. It just makes for really quick cutting work. And I will just take the shape of that bunny and trim off all of these tiny little pieces and just collect them to the side. Go right around there. And then I just kind of poke and grab. And I'll just keep continuing to go around and grab these little extras. I decided that I am going to keep this wordless. How cute is that? So fun. And you can also use those little pieces that you cut off to you know, add any filler in where you'd like it. But I'm gonna keep this completely wordless because if I put Happy Easter on there, then I feel like you can't keep it up for all of spring. And I think this is a cute little spring look as well. So let's go ahead and simply, you can use the adhesive of your choice. I am a lover of the hot glue. So I am just going to add that all over to the back here. And place that right down, making sure that's Nice and center. Again, you could grab some probably white adhesive vinyl because I think that would have the most contrast if you wanted to add any wording. You would probably want to move your bunny up or somewhere maybe to the side to add or have enough room to add wording, but I think that looks really cute. So keeping it super, super simple and all of these were really affordable. Again, Dollar Tree and then the bunny was Hobby Lobby. I used scrap vinyl for creating a little design. So everything super affordable and it would make a perfect little gift too. I love how that turned out. The next thing that I'm doing is actually going to be a gift. I'll move that to the side because we'll come back to that glue gun later, but I have some foil iron on, which I absolutely love. And I also have this Easter table runner, which is beautiful. Again, if you wanted to just do a spring little theme here, you could skip um, the happy Easter sentiment and put something else on there. But I thought these colors were just stunning. So I will, I'll go ahead and deconstruct that with the um, label in just a second and get that removed. But let's go ahead and move on to simply weeding out our foil. Now I'll put this font down below as well. It's my number one go-to as of lately because it just makes everything look gorgeous when typed out. And I'll go ahead and grab all of my little middle pieces to my design. Foil iron-on is just stunning to work with and not only is it very easy to cut and weed, but it really has a visual pop on a project. I think it's so pretty. I did a t-shirt a few years back and I'll place a link to that tutorial down below. Actually, I'll probably place a link right up here. You'll see a little pop-up. And I did a shirt and foil iron-on. It was one of my favorite shirts. It's so pretty. And if you haven't worked with foil iron-on, this is your gentle nudge to go buy yourself a roll. Okay, so this says Happy Easter. Isn't that just stunning? And 
What we'll do is I'm gonna go over to my heat press. This is the first time that I'm using my heat press in my new craft room. It's all set up and ready to go. So I am so excited to get reunited with it. All right, let's get this all taken off and let's press. I am going to press this right onto one little end here. And you could duplicate this and put this on both ends if you'd like. I'm simply going to do one end and I think that's going to look really pretty. Before I do that, what I'll do is pre-press my material. That way I can make sure that it is nice and straight, although it is iron, or pretty ironed and not very wrinkly. But if yours was, then that pre-press would help that. But it's also making sure there's no moisture in the garment. That way everything lays down perfectly and lasts. Then I'm going to do a little lint roll just to make sure there's nothing on the surface and then I'll press this down using my heat. Okay, once removed from my heat, I'm just simply going to set this on a cool surface and allow that heat to be drawn out. That way I can peel this once it's cool. All right, and once cool, I will simply monitor closely as I peel up the liner. If I have any problem areas, which luckily I do not, what I would do if for some reason something was peeling up let me turn this around because is that bothering you that it's upside down? Okay, there we go. So what I was saying there is if you did have any areas that were not quite laying down, just keep this, place it right back over because you want to protect your iron on from your heat source. So you want this barrier. Place it right back over and just give it some additional heat. Now something that I did on mine is I went ahead and I placed it a little further up to not land on the yellow because I find that the gold and yellow are just too similar. And by moving it up and having it land more on that purple stripe there, I think that it had a little bit more contrast. So it's going to depend where your pattern lines up on yours. You might not have yellow down here if you go and repurchase this as well, but just things to think about when you are placing your design down so that you get the most contrast. But don't you love that foil? It's just gorgeous. It's going to look so pretty on a table and I'm absolutely in love with this. I'm making this for a gift and I think it turned out beautiful. I found this darling little Easter tray at Michael's this year and they had a variety of colors but I instantly fell in love with this pretty yellow. I'm going to apply some rubbing alcohol just to the inside there because I'm going to place my design right down in the center. So let me go ahead and clean that up. And then I'll let that sit and dry while I grab my design and begin to weed it out. Okay, this design is so adorable. I'm very excited to see this finished project. Okay, so I felt like that was a bit of a labor of love and I've kind of spoken to this before. If I cut, so I cut this out with my Cricut, um, well, probably a little over a week ago and I just haven't had time to get creative and complete my projects yet. But I have found, and let me know if this, I think some of you have said that you've kind of related as well, but if I cut out my designs and then let them sit. For some reason, it's harder for me. Let me zoom in a little bit, but it's harder for me to weed them. I'm not sure if once, you know, they're cut and then they sit, if like the adhesive 
um, along the cuts just kind of starts, I don't, I'm not saying glue back together, but maybe starts just kind of um, at, at reattaching itself a little bit or getting a little too comfortable. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if I'm making sense, but the longer I wait to weed out something, the more difficult it is. Whereas if I go ahead and cut it and weed it, I can do it in seconds and it is not as uh, laborious as you just saw. And what I should do really is if I know I'm not gonna be able to create for you know a week or so, I should at least get it weeded right after I cut it. But sometimes time just doesn't allow. Okay, so isn't this design just darling? I think that's so cute. I loved it and I love how kind of classic that is. Okay, this little T got just a bit nudged. So I'm going to do a little bit of surgery there and get it just kind of placed back in a better spot. And I think that looks better. Okay, so this says, I think this needs to move up just a little bit too. The original chocolate bunny cottontail company with a little established date. Oops, sorry about that. And I think that's adorable. All right, let's go ahead and add our transfer tape. But before, get that little one weeded out. And then we'll put this on that beautiful yellow tray. Okay, so to bring my roll in here Oops. and I kind of like to just hover my design over my transfer tape that way I know exactly how much I need I think that should be just about right and let's make this easy to lay down so I'm gonna grab sure that lines up okay let's just grab a little bit so probably about an inch fold back the liner oh I did more than an inch I did about two inches but the point is is that you don't remove the entire liner just do enough to get started just lay this down a little bit at a time okay Close. and I'll use that little flap as a handle to pull and release the rest of my transfer tape. And then of course, do the same thing we did earlier by burnishing the front and the back. This is one of those videos where I think every craft I've made so far is turning out to be my favorite. So it's gonna be a hard one to, to say which one ends up being the one I love the most, but that's a good thing, right? All right, now pull that away, and there's our design in our transfer tape. And there we go. Okay, I think that looks really nice. Lay that down, burnish. Okay, and then I will gently, so I don't scratch my tray. Let's see if I can find, there we go. Sometimes you just have to see which corner hasn't laid down as much as the rest. And then I'll just peel this up. Oh, that's pretty. And then just nudge down any pieces that are coming up. Sometimes on larger designs like this, it's easy to overlook an area with your little scraper tool when pressing it down. So just go slow and you can easily fix any areas that are coming up. But just don't tear it fast, because if you do, then it's harder to fix if something wants to come up. Okay, there is our little tray. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. Oh, I love that. This might be my favorite. Oh, I don't know. Gosh, everything is turning out so cute. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to one more craft. All right, so our final craft is having fun with this beautiful little beaded bunny. I found this at Hobby Lobby as well. It was in there, let's see, Easter 2024, 9.99 at the time that I purchased it. And I instantly loved it. I thought this was so cute. So I wanted to add some flowers to it and you can make 
felt flowers with your Cricut. You can, you can. And I have a tutorial on how to do so on my channel, but I feel like I've just been a little lazy lately, not in a bad way, but I just wanted to do something a little quicker. So if you want to learn how to make these yourself, go ahead and head on over to the video that I'm gonna link right up here, or you can search felt flowers on my channel and I'll show you how to make them. They're pretty easy, but they do take some time. So all that being said, I did find this pretty flower garland at Target it and I thought, you know what, this is going to be just as fun as and easy and it was really affordable. So it was just an easy yes for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this garland apart. And I know, I know we're gonna trim it, but that's, it's gonna be fine. It has a purpose and then this purpose is creating a really fun look for this bunny. And I know I'm not going to need all of these pieces I think I'll probably just do something on the bottom right and I'm going to keep all of these little felt pieces as well. But let's just do a little, I want to say trio, just like this. Okay. So once again, bringing in my hot glue, let's get that turned right back on okay, and preheat. And let me think about arrangement here. I think I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. We'll just do something like this down at the bottom. You could also do it at the top as well. I just kind of feel like it makes it look like a flower crown and I don't know. I don't know if I want that. I think I like the bottom better. But we could bring in even more and kind of just do a nice curve there. I think that would be really neat. So let me, I like working in odd numbers when it works. And let's do five. So I think I'll start here. And we'll just add hot glue. And let's place down. Then I'll also add glue to these little leaves. That way we can steady those on a bead and get those placed as well. Okay. So I'll just go through and start kind of arranging and seeing where I want everything to kind of be placed. And what's happening is the beads want to roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to glue the little flowers together. That way they kind of start helping everything stay put. So I'll just do, kind of grab a petal, place that together, and I think that will help remedy that so that they all stop kind of rolling around, if you will. Just pinch that. Oh, that helped already. Okay, and once it's hung on your door or wall, that's going to remedy itself because it's not gonna be moving around. Okay, that's looking good so far. Let's do a couple more. Oh, I like that, I think that's really fun. Okay, so I'm pausing for just a second to get all of this remedied, all these little glue strings, which they easily, easily come off. Okay, and then I'll glue these two together. I highly recommend if you do this, with no matter what flowers you use, glue the flowers together because it really helped with a lot of that rocking. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back through some of this garland and I'm going to trim off some of these leaves because I just feel like we need the filler. So that might even be enough, but I'm going to put some glue on these and just kind of tuck them even onto the flowers themselves, but just to give a little fill up there or where necessary. And I'm finding it easiest just to, oh, I need more glue. And that's actually just fine because that was the last one. Um, I'm finding it easy to put it on the, the leaf and then just find a spot where that needs to go. All right, I think that that was a really, really fun and quick solution if you want to do something like this and make it really nice and springy. But again, you can make these with your Cricut, so I'll be sure to link that video for you so that you can do that as well. They're really fun and then you could bring in some more color as well. But love this idea. You probably can get felt flowers just about anywhere, but I was walking around Target 
and I was thinking about this project and honestly I was thinking I'm not gonna do that this year I just don't have time to do all the felt flowers and all of a sudden I walked right to an, a little end cap and there they were and it was just God's way of saying you really want to do this craft this year let's make it easy on you so there it is sorry you can't get the little bunny ears all at once but I think that turned out darling all right what a fun little lineup of crafts I hope you enjoyed part two of Easter crafts for this year I'm loving that tray I think the SVG is so fun and I'll link that design down down below in case you want to either use it to recreate this look or do something else with it. But I think the classic look of that is just gorgeous. It would be really pretty on a round wood sign for your front door as well. And I love the foil look on the table runner. That's so pretty. I cannot wait to go to Target tomorrow and grab some sweet treats. Again, I'm going to get the pastel M&Ms. I think those are so fun, but I'll fill that right on up and it'll be a very fun little piece to my kitchen. All right, everyone. I hope that this was a fun for you to watch. I hope that you enjoyed and got a little bit of inspiration for a couple more crafts that you can do this year. We still have some time before Easter comes and I wish you all a wonderful Easter. Thank you so much for watching.